As with many Asian countries, Taiwanese society encourages people to go to college and beyond. The reasons are job and prestige related. Chinese and Confucian influenced societies have repeatedly emphasized the prestige of an advanced degree. As the poet Wang Zhu from the Song Dynasty says, to be a scholar is to be the top of society. What happens though when higher education becomes universal? If everyone has a college degree, then does it really give you a leg up on everyone else? I've seen this sentiment expressed in unguarded moments by Taiwanese people, that the degrees that they worked so hard for aren't so useful for finding an actual good paying job. The sentiment is usually twinged with a bit of resentment, and I don't blame them. Gosh, what did I spend those four years for? In this video, I want to talk a bit about the economic forces behind this degree devaluation and why it exists in the context of the larger economic trends happening across the world today. But first, I want to take the time to talk briefly about a new thing that I've been working on, the Asianometry email newsletter. For the newsletter, I just finished up a newsletter recapping and reviewing a previously popular video of mine, the one about Ant Group. I was able to add a few new items to the video script, including an author's note, including what to make of Xi Jinping personally deciding to stop the IPO as well as China's new antitrust tech laws. In the future, I hope to do this more, using the newsletter to add new items and thoughts I had after posting the video. So yeah, I hope you'll find it worth subscribing, and I hope to try to make it worth your while. You can expect a newsletter every four days at 1 a.m. Taiwan time. Much thanks. And now, back to the video essay. In Japan, South Korea, and Taiwan, college entry rates for young people are over 50%, the academic threshold for what is considered to be universal education access. Such numbers are far higher than what we can find in many Western countries like the United States, which shows 41% as of 2018. Japan, South Korea, and Taiwan breached the 50% college entry number relatively recently. Taiwan, number one in 2004, South Korea in 2005, Japan in 2010. Compared to the latter two, Taiwan's universal education initiatives went harder, further, and faster. Note that in 1998, the Taiwanese bachelor entrance rate was 33%. In just five to six years, that rate skyrocketed to 50% in 2003, then continued on to 67% in 2010. South Korea's universal education access started slow and ended fast, starting with 45% in 2000, going to 51% in 2005, and then speeding up to a staggering 71% by 2008. My guess is that this is driven by the global financial crisis or some government initiative. Japan barely budged from 40% to 43% from 2000 to 2005. Population, of course, has a lot to do with this, with Taiwan having the smallest population of 23 million, South Korea 51 million, and Japan 125 million. I think that's something that we need to point out. There is some inherent value in a college education. Many people make it clear that going to college has many benefits beyond that which is just employment related. To them, the liberal arts education helps make a more valued, well-rounded person. It's more than just a crude financial investment. And of course, I agree with them in many ways. A liberal arts education of the type I had was instrumental in making me the person I am today. No denying it. With that being said, there are also studies that point out that expanding higher education access to a universal level can deflate the value of these degrees as an employment credential. It becomes a supply and demand question. Too much supply, graduated humans, brings prices, human wage, down. There is evidence that this is what happened in Taiwan. I have done a previous video about Taiwan's stagnating wage issues. The gist of the problem is that Taiwan's economy GDP-wise is still growing, but the average wage for labor has not kept up. I said it in the other video and I want to say it again here, this is a global problem tied in with our world's increasing income inequality issues 
each country has their own flavor of this problem. This is Taiwan's flavor. Taiwan's flavor hits higher education graduates especially hard. From 2000 to 2010, wages went down for everyone, but wages declined most seriously for higher education degree holders. It went from 51,000 NTD a month in 2000 to 42,000 NTD a month by 2010. Though I will have to note that the 2010 measurement period is coming off the 2008 global financial crisis. This is in contrast with people with junior college degrees and upper secondary equivalent to high school. The wages there are basically flat. Perhaps due to the wage issue, unemployment rates for higher education degree holders rose to be higher than those for lower status degrees. This is unique um, in the cohort of South Korea and Japan who show a unemployment benefit uh, from having an upper degree. So that is the supply leg of the equation. Universal education access brought a lot more educated people into the labor market, knowledge worker types. The problem is that the expansion of supply has not been matched with an expansion in knowledge worker demand. As we exit the 2010s, Taiwan's transition to a service-based knowledge economy remains incomplete. The economy still has a heavy industrial and manufacturing component. Taiwan still makes things, like actual living, breathing things. And that's not a bad thing. There are plenty of economies that do fine just making really good things. Germany, Switzerland, the European countries. Think about all the people in America complaining that the U.S. doesn't make things anymore. Experience in making things counts for something. Taiwan can build an elevated MRT extension 10 miles through a crowded urban area in just nine years. That's an advantage. Think about how much it helped when Taiwan needed to generate its own domestic supply of facial masks. Taiwan is, by some estimates, the world's second biggest maker of fa facial masks, and that happened in just six months. An advanced manufacturing economy can be great, but it is not equipped to employ a huge number of knowledge-based workers. But those workers have to go somewhere if they don't leave the country. So a new type of worker employment was created, the quote, associate professional. These people are technicians, supervisors, service workers, and salespeople. These jobs are broadly different and often vary. But in general, they share a common thread. They require a degree, yet pay little more than half of what actual knowledge-based professional jobs management, admin, etc. do. It's not a high-end job, and the surge in these types of jobs is indicative of a labor force not being properly absorbed by the labor market. And since these jobs do not pay so well, they have limited social mobility. The people who take them sort of never qualify themselves for anything better. Middle class, but not quite. On the way up, but not. Taiwan has continued the education trend beyond just the bachelor's degree. A stunning percentage of young Taiwanese have a master's degree. The number of master's students has surged six times over in the past two decades. There's a lot of evidence that this trend in students getting master's degrees are doing so because they want to distinguish themselves in the job search. They are worried about their employability and wages. In other countries like the US, UK, Japan, and Canada, there is a significant wage premium associated with getting a master's degree. That has not been the case with Taiwan since universal education access was achieved in 2004. Starting around then, the wage premium of master's degrees holders have declined, likely as a pile-on effect from the decline in earnings power of the bachelor's degree. I am reminded a bit of the situation from the Roman Empire days. In the late 4th century, the Huns began invading the lands of the Germanic tribes, the Visigoths, or just the Goths. The Goths, unable to compete, were forced to seek refuge with the Roman Empire. Worsening tensions between the Romans and the Goths would lead to the sack of Rome in 410. The bachelor degrees owners, in this metaphor, are the Huns, the Goths are the master's degrees holders, forced to flee to worse lands. Okay, I know this is a weird metaphor, but it's the first thing that popped in my mind. The Taiwan education earnings paradox is a warning to developed governments around the world who mandate hard university entrance targets with the idea that economic prosperity and high employment will follow. 
many Northeast Asian economies, Hong Kong, Singapore, South Korea, struggle with this problem to some extent or another. Too many associate professionals. It's a good way to really disenchant your young people, to inspire your kids to study hard and go to college, only to have them end up working the counter at 7-Eleven if they can find a job at all. That really gets people down, then they get angry and start doing things like protesting. Or calling for socialism. Don't get me wrong, I still think expanding access to education is a good thing, but even too much of a good thing can be a bad thing. Each economy has its own situation, however. For example, America's economy likely needs more knowledge workers, Japan's too, such and such. And it also has a lot to do with the university themselves. Are they coming out with the right type of person, etc., etc.? But that's beyond this video. For the case of Taiwan, I do think that things are getting better. A wave of deglobalization has revitalized the local economy. In addition, Taiwan is one of the few winners in this recent economy um, in 2020. The shift in supply chains, the reshoring of capital, and high demand for Taiwan electronics has triggered a surge in economic growth here. It will take some time, but wage growth will pick up as businesses face a reckoning and are forced to raise their wages. It happened in America, so it's likely it's going to happen here. The government has more to do, of course, in order to encourage this, but I am optimistic. Alright, that's the end of this video essay. A lot of people have been asking me about kind of Taiwan local economics and wage growth and the employment issue. Um, and it's a really interesting study. Uh, enjoyed doing this. Thanks, everyone. Have a good evening. Enjoy yourselves. Bye-bye.